to get truly alone is a very difficult thing nowadays. It used to be that spots like this wilderness where you could be alone and there was solitude and all you could hear was the wind and the water. These spots used to be all over, but now we travel thousands of miles to try and position ourselves in a place that we'll get to enjoy the sound of the wilderness. And it's spots like these that really help shape my understanding of Psalm 8410 when he says, better is one day in God's courts than a thousand elsewhere. Because when you stand in a place like this where nothing has been touched and you're the only one out there, you truly understand that a day here is better than a thousand anywhere else. Often when we think about the hunt, we think about the climax of it, getting that big moose in Alaska and standing over it. But there are so many days that click by when you're out there and every single day is so full. As you're working the land, as you're looking for the bull that you're after, there's also all the little opportunities that come along and just fall right in your lap. And if you get too focused on the bull, you can miss out on all the excitement that happens in between. One of the valuable lessons that I've learned over the years is that there is so much more to the hunt than the moose that you're after. Uh, and there's so much opportunity there, but you have to bring the right equipment to enjoy it to its fullest. And those are the things that you learn over the years. You learn to bring shotguns, you learn to bring fishing poles, you learn to bring different gear that's going to allow you to capitalize on the total experience that God has for you out there in Alaska. days just kept clicking by, but it didn't seem to bother us at all. We were never bored, there was never a dull moment. We kept passing up moose after moose and just enjoying it to its absolute fullest. I've been fortunate enough to harvest a number of really good moose and on this trip I was looking for something exceptional and so we were taking our time looking over what was in this valley and the rut was just kicking in heavier and heavier and every day we were seeing new bulls and we knew it was just a matter of time if we just kept after it that we were going to turn up a really good bull so we just kept enjoying the time and waiting for that bull to arrive. Yeah, 
Yikes. You know, in life, if you want something special, you got to be willing to wait for it. It doesn't mean that you sit there and do nothing, but you can't pull the trigger on the first thing that you see. And this waiting game had brought us to day eight of the hunt, and it was a windy, wet morning, but we decided to head out anyway. And as soon as we got in the boat, I looked up on the hillside and saw a magnum bull working his way across it, looking for cows. Big square tops, points all over down low. Did you see him? Pretty funny. One lesson that Alaska teaches you real quick is that everything takes way longer to get to than you'd think and it is way harder and farther than you ever thought it was when you just look up on the hillside. And this bull was no exception. He looked like he was just right up off the lake, but we were huffing and puffing and digging up this hill just trying to get within a few hundred yards of this bull and it took us forever.
It's day eight of the hunt and it has finally all come together. The right bowl has come out. We're now in the right spot and all that's left to do is make the shot. Ready. You ready? Yep. Practice. Hold on, hold on. You ready? Hold on, wait, wait. Yeah. Dang. You gonna go down right there? Oh yeah. Is down. There we go. That's a cool bowl. That's a crazy looking bowl. That's what I was looking for right there. I wanted a crazy one. That's a crazy looking bowl. He's got, I'm wondering if he's actually Shovely Joe. I don't think he's Shovely Joe, but he's, he's got something weird on his left. He has a crazy ground, bowl. Or his left paddle. Dang, he took up some rap. <clears throat> Dude, I am so excited about that. That is just, that is what I've been looking for. He has got all sorts going on. That is, I mean, when I thought of it, that is what I was thinking about right there. Man, that's crazy. We see we passed up a lot of bulls for him. How many bulls have we passed? I mean, we've well, legit passed up like seven nice bulls looking for that guy. But you can see in the pictures that thing is just gnarly. He's dead right there. All right, we've got a bull down right up here on the hillside behind us. And if you notice, we have a little bit of open here. But that's just solid willow out there. When you get in that stuff, it's above your head. You can't see anything. So what we're gonna do is Colton's gonna show you how we use base map to just mark where he's at and we can literally walk right to him with this remote marker. So Colton. All right, so we're here right now. Okay. What you do, you take remote marker right there. Click remote marker and that bull ran about 30 yards no, down No, he was 444. Now he's dead solid. Oh, okay, 444. Next, and then what you do? Oh, that's cool. So you angle it. Okay. And that bull is dead right in that opening right there. There. So what that does is it gives you your exact precise location. That's cool. Right to where he is. And then you hit mark, done, and you're done. Completely. You don't have to do anything else. And you know exactly where that animal is. Well, let's see if it's actually accurate. We'll go up there and yeah. see if our, our dot is on there. Hey, here with this thick tangled brush. Like, it looks like it's nothing out here. But, man, you just, you can't, like, you, I literally can't see anything. That's, I can reach eight and a half feet and that's above me. It's like nine foot tall willow right here. There, holy cow. Oh, man. Look at the wave in that paddle. That is wild. Gnarly. We're on that side. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh, he's heavy. Oh my gosh. Dang. Dude, that's a good bull. That's a really good bull. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Lord. Let's take a look at him. What a nice spot to die. Wow, look how he curls here. It's fantastic. Oh. Oh. Man, 
fantastic. That's what I was looking for. Look at that thing. Oh my goodness. So wild. Beautiful. Fantastic. It's so crazy when you're up here. I mean, we've been out here for eight or eight or nine days now. And you never know when the day is going to be. Like, we're sitting in the tent this morning, and it's just pouring down rain. And I'm just like, well, I was thinking to myself, probably three or four more days before we finally get a bull. But it could happen any moment. Like, it's just, it's going on. And today was the day. And that's the, that's the crazy thing. Like, 35 years, I... Like consciously, I've been wanting to get a moose like this for probably the last 25 years. Like I've been thinking about this day for 25 years, getting a bull like this in the crosshairs, having it all come together, just being able to do it all and having it come together. And it finally happened after 25 years. That's a quarter century of wanting something to happen. And today was the day. And the thing is, is that the thing is, is that Jesus says, today is the day of your salvation. Today is the day that everything you've ever been pursuing can finally come to fruition. Because here's the reality with us as people. Like this moose here, what it really symbolizes is like I've thought about it my entire life. I thought if I could get a moose like this, I would be happy. The experience, everything. It would be, be a, an experience that would just be incredible and I, I would enjoy it so much. And I just know if I had a moose like this and I had this experience that I would be happy. And that's the thing that we're pursuing in life is joy. We're pursuing fullness of joy. And David says, I've said it a million times, but David says it in Psalm 1611, he says, in God's presence is fullness of joy. In other words, the thing that we're pursuing, we're chasing after all these things that we think are going to bring us joy. And the reality is, is the only place that we will ever, ever find fullness of joy. We might find glimpses of joy. We might find moments of joy. We might find those, those highs where life is good. But then we go from life is good to life is bad. And how do I get back to that high again? Because it's never fullness. It's partiality of joy. But in God's presence is fullness of joy. Psalm 84 10 says that better is one day in God's courts than a thousand elsewhere. And elsewhere includes anywhere. Elsewhere includes anywhere. The, the most wild vacation, wild hunt that you can imagine in all of your mind. The biggest animal, that's, that's part of elsewhere. And better is one day with God than a thousand elsewheres, than a thousand anywheres, than a thousand big bulls, than, than the biggest experience you've ever had in your life. Being with God is where your soul will finally be satisfied because what's really going on is our soul is crying out for God. In fact, in John chapter six, Jesus says, don't labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life. He says, I am the bread of life. And if anyone eats from me, he will never be hungry. And what he's trying to say there to us, if we, if we can hear it, is don't pursue the things that are perishing, the things that you might be full for a couple of hours, but when you wake up in the morning after a big steak dinner, you're hungry again. When, when you go a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of years after something like this, you want another one. And, and Jesus says, don't, don't labor, don't spend your entire life looking for those momentary fullnesses. Those momentary, those moments where you're, you're full for a moment. Labor, work for, move towards that place where you're full forever. And I want to challenge you that I had no idea that today was going to be the day. But today you're hearing that God loves you. You're hearing that you need a relationship with God. That, that God is everything that you've ever been pursuing. And today, today could be the day that you begin to experience fullness of joy like you've never experienced before. What's happened in our lives is we've all sinned. We've all fallen short. We've all thought what sin is, 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 is believing that something can bring us more satisfaction. Something like this could bring us more satisfaction than God. And then dedicating our life to pursuing it. And we believe that there are things that are better than God. And this is what the essence of sin is. We see it in Genesis chapter 3. And the word of God tells us that all of us, you, me, 
everybody has sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And the penalty of sin, the wages of sin is death. And death is a reality that we all have to face. Every single one of us is headed towards death and destruction. But it doesn't have to end that way. It doesn't matter what we've done. It matters what we do now. If we turn to the Lord, Jesus came. He went to the cross. He died on the cross and made a way. He, all the, the penalty of our sin was paid on that cross. And then he was dead for three days and he rose from the dead, defeating death, the very thing that we can't defeat on our own. And he made a way through death to everlasting, eternal, abundant life that he came to give us. If we would put our faith in Jesus, if we would churn from all the things, this is the, uh, the idea of repentance, repent. Churn from the things that you have been pursuing. If this is what you're pursuing more than God, churn away from it and run towards God because you're pursuing an empty stomach and in God's presence is fullness of joy and better is one day with God than a thousand elsewhere and then a thousand anywhere, than a thousand of these mooses, a thousand days like this, better is one day with God. If you would put your faith in Jesus Christ, you would begin to experience the very thing that you've been pursuing your entire life. So I wanna challenge you today. If you think this is awesome, if you think this experience is awesome, I'm telling you right now, I've experienced this. I've experienced incredible things up here in Alaska, but I've never experienced anything like walking with Jesus and the fullness of joy that that has brought me. The, the, the things in my life that have come into order, the, the, the peace that I have that surpasses understanding, the, 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 the abundance of joy that I have at all times. There's nothing like walking with Jesus. And today could be the day that you begin to experience that. If you wanna know more about giving your life to Jesus, go over to our website. It's www.limitlesshunting.com and you can request a copy of The First Mile. It's a resource that I wrote that'll tell you who God is, why we need a relationship with him, how to have a relationship with him, how to walk with God and learn what the purpose he has on your life is and experience this fullness of joy and how to tell other people about God also. So go over to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com and request a copy of The First Mile. I'll send it to you absolutely free. We wanna see you live in better days ahead than anything that you've ever lived up to this point. top of our mark and here is a bull you gotta get it more over your back <laughs> who would ever pack such a thing I wanted to tell you about an opportunity that you have to go further in your relationship with Jesus. Whether you're somebody who's just exploring and has a ton of questions about Jesus, or you're new to your faith, we have an opportunity at Limitless Outdoors through our First Mile Discipleship Program. In 2023, we are launching our online First Mile Discipleship Groups. And what these are is it's an opportunity for you to be involved with six other people meeting on Zoom and going through the First Mile together so your questions can be answered, so you can go through and, and learn powerful practices and how to walk with Jesus, how to study His Word. There's going to be a ton of opportunity there. And if this is something that interests you, go over to our website, www 
www.limitlesshunting.com forward slash discipleship. And you can answer a few questions there and sign up for one of these groups. Our space is limited in these groups, but if you get over there and get signed up, we're gonna put you on the list. And the first people that come are they gonna be the first people that get involved in it. So get over to our website, sign up and begin the journey of pressing into Jesus and experiencing all of the promises and blessings that he has for your life.